Hi, welcome to Garage Studio Modelers. Uh, my name's Hard Velo, and I'm with my good friend Dave Forrest. And uh, we're going to uh, start a new project today. I'm going to start with this project, which, thank you, Dave, you bought this for my birthday. A yeah. Tamiya Sheridan 135th scale. And uh, it's, uh, I guess, a subject matter uh, armor that's closer to my familiarity. Some of you probably saw me build the Millennium Falcon. Um, I'm not a sci-fi builder, um, so I was in unknown territory there. And uh, I think now I'm back in uh, this territory. And I think part of the whole purpose of Garage Studio Modelers, Dave, right, it's about, it's less about the, the, the subject matter, but it's about modeling techniques and all the different techniques that you, you can apply. So we're going to take you through... Um, this kit. So thanks, Dave. Any uh, tips that you might Yeah, have? I mean, I, I, the first thing I have to say is, you know, it was your birthday when I bought you the kit. My 25th um, birthday. But, um, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, but the reason why I bought it is that after seeing you and what you went through on the on the console, <laughs> um, I, you know, I said, this man needs a Timia kit. He needs a Timia D kit. That's true. That's true. But I, I don't think mm. you're going to build this out of the box. Quite. Not quite. Not but, quite. But you're going to add a few things. I, mean, there's, few I think there's some yep. nice little ads that you've mm -hmm. got in, in store. So mm -hmm. I'm I think sure it would be great to see what uh, what those are. But yeah, this is, um, you know, I've seen some, uh, you know, seen some other modelers actually build this. And it's, uh, uh, goes together really easy, beautiful looking kit. And a, and a neat subject, right? You don't see a lot of That's Vietnam cool subject. era subject these days. So. That's true. But I uh, want to thank you for that because you're right. I mean, uh, I have not built uh, a modern current Tamiya kit in a long, long time. A long time. The last one I did was the uh, Russian Matilda. I uh, was right. the new Matilda. But that was even about, I think, when it came out. And I, I that was a long time ago. That was like six years ago. Yeah, I modified that one as well. So, so yeah, we... I hope yeah. you look forward to it. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to keep my friends sane, uh, you know. So um, yeah, yeah. This this should be interesting. We'll I'll be uh, we'll be paying attention uh, to this with uh, some. Great. Others. So uh, we'll come back in a moment, and we'll just go through. I haven't opened this yet, so we'll just go through an initial, very quick inbox review, uh, and we'll be back soon. Okay. So I'm gonna open this box. Oh, by the way, um, if you ever look at these uh, the boxes for for Tania, a lot of a lot of the writing is in is in Japanese. Uh, and well, this one's translated, uh, but with my very limited Japanese, this is basically telling you the history of the vehicle. Uh, that's all it's really telling you. Um, w when they went into action, and uh, a little bit of you, you can use a translator to do that. But that's that little piece is all about the history. On this side, it kind of gives you the uh, the details of the model itself that it comes with. Uh, um, a bit of history, a bit of, uh, this one's a bit more history as well, and a bit about the various uh, parts in the kit and, and the uniqueness of the kit. So, when did this come out, Dave? Do you remember? Uh, this came out within the last year. Yeah, pretty recent. Yeah. I think when I was in Japan a couple of months ago, it still wasn't out. Um, and it only released when I uh, came back to Canada. So, let's have a look. I have not seen this. So, um... Let's have a look at what it looks like. First time I've opened it. There are a lot of in-build, uh, in-box reviews of this kit, so I'm not going to dwell on this a lot. But I thought, given that we do have a kind of like live type of approach to the uh, Garage Studio models, let's have a look. So the first brew looks like you've got some nice figures here. It's the usual crispness of, of the mold. These little guys look like the um, smoke grenade launchers. You've got a shield here. Um, it's not a bad thickness, it's pretty thin, um, but I'll show you some aftermarket stuff that I'm going to use. Got a little M16 here, and I'm just going to put a little light on it so I can see it. There's very, man, there's very little mold lines on this thing. Um, there's your 50 cal. Yeah, it's a Tamiya kit. It's a Tamiya kit. There's very little molding on this. And even on these little brackets, very little. Very little clean yeah, it's up. funny you talk about mold lines. Yeah. Like a, so recently I bought the Ryfield models uh, Yag Panther and a Sturm Tiger. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a surprising amount of mold lines. Are there? On the Sturm Tiger. And Are there? I had a good look at the. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it's it's crisp and it's beautiful, but with a lot of the small parts that you have for the limited interior you get, there's a lot of surprising. There's a lot. Much, yeah. Really. Flash and whatnot. So. 
Well, let's see what this looks like. To me, it uses a lot of that um, slide molding technology, right? They're starting to, yeah. They're starting to. This stuff looks really crisp. It's hard to tell, but the, the, uh, the rivet detail on the side here is very, very subtle. It's very nice. It's not overly done. And what does this say? The, uh, the date of this is 2018. Um, I think in my limited knowledge of uh, the Tamiya Sheridans, the first Sheridan released by Tamiya was probably back in the early 70s, 1971 or 72. Um, and it, uh, I know that, uh, who made the modern, Academy. Academy, yes. Dave, made a, a more modern version, but I heard that there's some issues with the turret. Uh, and so the, a lot of guys are asking for. Um, well, Rocky Mall just came out with a Golf Four version. Of oh, Sheridan. oh, have you seen it? I've seen, yeah, well, I haven't seen the inside mm. the box, but. Hmm. Well, like anything, uh, again, little caveats. I'm not an expert on the Sheridan tank, but I think for the purposes of people who are watching uh, our videos, uh, I think our purpose is not to to dwell on the. Um, the technicalities and the specifications of each subject matter um, and more about modeling techniques. So uh, that's why I focused on the Millennium Falcon. It may not be accurate in colors, but I think it's the idea of our videos is to showcase modeling techniques and painting. So this one here, you've got some little wires here, uh, some poly caps and the mesh here that comes with the kit, which <coughs> this black mesh here is for this front piece here. Now, the one thing I already noticed with this mesh, it's it's great, but it's extremely two-dimensional. And when you look at this picture here, you've got it's like three-dimensional little details in the, in the uh, the netting here. So I'll show you uh, an aftermarket that I did buy because I heard some reviews that not bad, but if you really want a better replacement part, uh, go with with uh, actually here I'll show you now. I bought two of them because I like to compare and oops I dropped my decals right on Dave's floor full of uh, water and mud uh, but they're perfectly safe. There's All right. no water and mud in this garage. <laughs> Here's the first aftermarket uh, set you can get. Can you pick that up Robert? Um, this is basically uh, Feather Series. Uh, looks like it's from China and Hong Kong and it gives you the uh, the mesh here. Now this particular mesh also is a bit two dimensional, but I can always use this for their products. I'm probably gonna use the set that's made by Tamiya because it gives you the metal barrel. And if you look closely at this set for the, for the, uh, for the mesh for this tank, it's, you can see some three dimensional details in this set. So they're both good, but I'd probably go with the Tamiya one uh, for now, and I'll use this uh, for spares. What was, that what was that used for? Was that just for? It's, I don't know. It, maybe one of the viewers can 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 tell me. It could could be f for frag fragmentation uh, projectile. I'm not sure. I honestly don't know. As I say, I'm not a, a like, Vietnam like guy. This, like a like a for RPGs. That type could of be. It, it could be. I'm not sure. And and, and excuse my ignorance, guys. Um, my. <laughs> My familiarity is Japanese World War II aircraft and Navy subjects, so this is a bit out of my domain as well. Um, so, we've got a bit of aftermarket. Let's just go through the rest of this. What have we got in the box? you got some nice molding here. Again, very crisp, very, very, very detailed and delicate. Nice shovel, very little mold marks. Uh, I'm doing this fairly quickly because, you know, there's going to be a lot of inbox reviews out there. They're very nice. Um, can you see through the plastic there, Robert? Yes. You've got some clear parts here. Oh, you've got some little tiny goggles for the figures. And uh, looks like these are for periscopes and things. And you have basically the hull and the turret parts. Now, now the one thing to note, I haven't seen in detail the other Sheridan kits, but I've heard, and you can go to the other great sites. In fact, I think Armor, Armor Am has got a, got a nice review of this kit. There's a lot of, to me, to me is really about engineering their kits. Um, so I guess they're trying to balance their, their price point for the subject uh, because they could add more, more details, they could add more photo etch. Um, but I think that they've reached a nice balance where for the price of this kit, I think it's around 60, 50, 60 bucks Canadian, Dave, uh, something like that, maybe more. Yeah, maybe 60, 70 bucks. Yeah. Then 
you know, that's not bad because I think what they're doing is they're compensating on some of the softer details. So be aware that if you really want, if you're really a Sheridan expert, there's, there's a whole lot more that you can add to this. Um, just looking at the hull again, there's probably a lot of fasteners that you could add to this that are not included on the model. But again, I think the purpose, guys, of our videos is to go in less detail of what was the correct instrument panel dials on a zero or whatever, and focus more on modeling techniques, right? That That's the theme of the... So I know some people may say, you miss this, you miss that. Um, our focus is, is about modeling techniques, weathering techniques, uh, and assembling techniques in our videos. Finally, we have the tree. Let's open this one up so we can get a better view. This one has got the most important part for a lot of us models, the running gear uh, and the tracks. Let's see, the tracks, oh, okay. So there's one thing I did notice here. You can see there are little injection marks, but they're extremely faint. I don't know if you can pick them up, Robert. I don't know if this light will help, but you can see there's tiny little injection marks, but you could probably sand those off. It doesn't look like you need any filler on those, just take some sandpaper or a sanding block and looks like it's flush enough that you could just sand those off. Um, the wheels themselves look like they're slide molded because there's no there's no mold on the center of the, um, uh, the uh, what are the rubber rims I think these were Dave on the Sheridan? I think so yeah. But this looks easily take care of this is the only thing that I've seen so far. Um, and you can go to other YouTubers who have got some probably pretty good inbox reviews. Uh, all of the rivet detail is very crisp. And Dave, you're right. This is way better than the limited run resin Cont 1007 aircraft. Uh, and these two, these two, are these two exactly the same? Yeah, they're exactly the same. Uh, they're exactly the same, same mold. So basically you get two mold, two, two uh, sprue frames for the same parts for the running gear. And then we have our decals, which are for certain, I think it's, what's this one saying? Third, third cavalry something squadron. Oh, third, squ uh, third squadron, fourth cavalry regiment is one of them. Uh, uh, Vietnam 1969, uh, just reading the side of the box. And the other one, uh, they include markings for the 1st Squadron, 11th Armored Cavalry Regiment, um, ACR, Vietnam also 1969. While we're on the markings, I also bought this great Echelon set, um, which is 11th ACR, Sheridan's in Vietnam, uh, because I want to do one of the markings on the back here there's there's this one here one of them is for a double gun mount um and that's why i bought this sheet echelon decals if you haven't used them guys are really great oh, they're fantastic, they're fantastic yeah. eh, dave yeah. um this one's got a what a template for the gun, double gun shield mount I, I think uh anyways i bought these so i have these i bought the aftermarket uh grill and mesh set uh and i bought this aftermarket set, which is for the double gun mount, um, and this one's for the twin MG mounts, again, uh, by FC Models. Um, I think they're out of Australia. I, I don't know. I don't know, actually. Whether I don't know where they are. They do a lot of 3D printed stuff. Yeah, and this one's 3D printed. You can kind of tell <laughs> in the box, you open this one up, um, that they are 3D printed. Let's open this up. See, they're all... And you get a, here's a shot. Look at this whole, th I've, I've, I haven't seen this. So you've got really nice, beautiful 3D molded shield. You got what appear to be what, 30 cals and a 50 cal. Um, so I got that for this because I want to do that double gun mounted version. I actually found out that I need to buy the FC uh, rear stowage. That little stowage thing they'd sell a set for that it's entirely up to you how much you want to buy but i think part of the fun of the hobby is making for me a kit that's a, a bit unique uh, with some aftermarket uh so i have those this table's a mess and i also bought um thanks brett i got this from you from sabbath publications uh at the nats which is the book on the 
Sheridan. And uh, I'll be using this as my primary. There's a lot of references on the Sheridan. The Honeycutt's got, got some references. Uh, Squadron, I believe, has got a walk around. But let me see if I can find the one I want to do here. I think it's, yeah, it's this one here, Robert. That's the one I'm going to do with a double MG mount. Uh, and these, these books are great because they give you a lot of walk around detail. Um, they give you some like really nice walk around and, um, yep. So this is, see, you get some real pictures of the, the weathering, the Vietnam reddish dust. So I got that. And the final thing I got, which was uh, a gift, in fact, um, from Calvin Tan. Hey, Calvin, uh, you remember when we met up in Singapore uh, while you were showing me your, your great German um, uh, uh, grenadier? Um, you kindly gave me these great little uh, heads that you painted up. Uh, so these are not me. They're done by, by master Calvin Tan. And thank you very much for giving me these little souvenirs from your little collection. So I'm going to use these guys on these figures. The figures, by the way, are very nice. Uh, and so I'm, I, I don't do a lot of figures, but look, you, you gave me these. Uh, so Calvin, on this video, when I enter this model, I'm, I'm going to just take the credit like I did the whole thing ha 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 uh, <laughs> um, but th these these are gorgeous and you said these were just some of your practice guys but no I think they're pretty darn good and I feel honored that you gave these to me oh uh, by the way we're in a in an Indian restaurant in Singapore um, and uh, you were showing me all this stuff while we were having a little Indian meal so I really appreciate that and so I've got all these things um, Again, this I, is probably. I, thought, the, I huh? thought those heads were too good to be yours. I oh, thought, thank you. Yeah, I yeah. Those heads I, are too I, good I, to I, I feel way better now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what friends are for. <laughs> uh, certainly, anything to improve my models uh, certainly helps. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go through probably less about the building uh, and more about the weathering, and uh, we'll come back on a few episodes of the, of the finish of that. Um, again, we're going to just take you through the whole, I guess, first sequence of modulation. I haven't figured out what paint set to use. Dave, what set were you suggesting? The OD set from, was it Gunzi? From, yeah, from Gunzi. The same, the same Mr. Color set that I use for right. Panzer but all of the drops. So, yeah, okay. yeah, we can try that. And, and uh, yeah, I'm going to do a minimum amount of research to see what the, the proper OD green is. But again, for these videos, Guys, please, please be aware that we're not focusing on, on the subject matter technically, um, but we're more focusing on the, uh, the, the painting and weathering. And the finishing, finishing techniques. Finishing techniques, yeah. That's the purpose of it. So there's my quick review. I think it's going to be cool. Um, I'll let you know how quickly I can put this thing together. And if we will put some things on tape, guys, as I'm building it, if it seems a little bit different or... or um, challenging then we'll film a bit of the building process but otherwise I'll probably um, focus on the finishing oh by the way I did notice that some of these tracks they are not like they're link in length but you can actually see look at this you can actually see there there's a sag there see and you see the sprue is sagged and then this one is also sagged so they've really done a great job you can buy link uh, link and length or sorry individual metal tracks uh, Fruel makes a set. Um, I think uh, two other companies make sets as I saw. I think MR Models or M Models. I can't remember. They, they make sets. Models, yeah, yeah they, there's a lot of them out there. But I think these are probably good enough for me. And uh, I'll probably use these tracks. So you've got some spare track, uh, I guess, around the uh, drive sp uh, sprocket and the idler. Um, but this is kind of cool because the actual sprue is actually... A little cantered, a little bit dipped, and I think that's about it. Again, yeah, feel free to put some comments if I missed anything in terms of my very quick and crude inbox review. And we'll be back to you uh, during the build phase and right into uh, build and painting in the uh, uh, next episode or in the next moment. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.